Hey, hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. This is another Red Pill Religion podcast. Red Pill Religion, where we say many things, but one of the things that we say is that you do not have to be religious. No, you really truly do not. However, that does not mean you get to lie about or abuse history, science, or religious people. Which a source which should not, which by the way should not be contentious, you would think. So you know, don't abuse religious people, don't lie about history, don't lie about science. Um, that shouldn't be too hard. So please support our work on RedPillReligion.com, um, where you will find every single day we are updating with new content. Um, we publish uh, new videos every day, usually published by our. Our, our wonderful volunteer Oda, who's been with us from the beginning, um, but also John Bosco and other members of the team uh, uh, frequently, and we often have uh, articles as well by others. So please uh, see our donation buttons. We could use your spiritual as well as financial support. So please hit our buttons for donate uh, donation buttons for PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, and ma uh, maker support. Please find us on pay uh, Patreon at Red Pill Religion. Find us on Gab at Red Pill Religion. Find us on Maker Support at Red Pill Religion. Find us on Facebook at Red Pill Religion. And oh, by the way, if you're a nerd and you like Discord, come check out our Discord chat room. Link is in the low bar on YouTube and on the blog. Um, we we have people of all religions, including atheists and agnostics who aren't jerkwads who just want to come in and talk and say hi. So please come and check us out. And please here on uh, on YouTube, give us a like, give us a subscribe, tell your friends or enemies about us. Now, joining us today before we take on the notorious Atheism is Unstoppable, who I'm going to try, try, try not to be too mean to. Uh, let's see who we've got with us today. First, of course, our old pal on, and, and, and guru to many, say hi to Deflating Atheism. Uh, deflating Atheism, say hi to everybody. Hello. I, w I was actually unaware about the uh, guru part. That actually kind of scares me. Well, a lot, a lot of people consider, consider you some uh, a form of senpai and are always happy to have you notice them. I, I, I'm the great, I'm the great eminence with my uh, two and a half year old channel. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. When you and I started, it was like like you and I. That was it. We were it, and we were the only ones who seemed to get it. You know, it's. Um, uh, it's been nice to see the change lately because really yeah. these guys are on the defensive and they deserve to be because by the way, hi there, atheism is, is unstoppable. We're not going to be particularly nice to you because we don't particularly like you or care about your feelings, just so you know. Anyway, I should stop talking and also mention that here on the channel, we, uh, we are actually very grateful to have Youngblood Ray with us. Uh, Youngblood Ray was, is actually uh, been a friend of the channel for a while now and he was kind enough to mark up this this verbal diarrhea from atheism is unstoppable <laughs> for us. So say hi, young blood Ray. Hey, how's it going? Now, Ray, I want to know. You sat through that entire video just to mark the parts that were sort of worth responding to. Did you manage to do it without a nosebleed and without screaming and crashing your face into a wall at the bloody stupidity of it? Did you manage not to hurt yourself? Basically, is what I'm asking. I had to do the latter because I was doing it at work, so I don't want people saying anything, but I may have smelt a little blood, but nothing too bad. <laughs> Just a little bit of a nosebleed. The customers were like, did you know your nose is bleeding? And, and they didn't know what Ray meant when he said something about, he's totally stoppable. Make him stop. Sorry. All right. Now I'm just going to tell you. Someone on the internet is wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By the way. The stupid, uh, it burns. The stupid, it burns. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh, AIU is actually, I know people are going to jump on me for saying this. He's actually my favorite atheist, quite honestly. I know that's, that's not a popular opinion. But he almost never actually talks about atheism. And if you go to uh, his the about on his YouTube channel, it says that when he was a little kid, uh, he saw Monty Python's The Life of Brian, and then he got it. I don't know if you can see me making air quotes here. I can see. Yeah, we can kind of see you. Yeah. So he, he got it, and, and that he's been an atheist ever since. So hey, that is that is how substantial his atheism is. Is that he saw a Life of Brian when he was a kid, and then decided that God doesn't exist. So that's as far as you're going to get with uh, with rational argumentation, I believe. Changing your worldview based on satire. 
<laughs> yeah, what I find yes. particularly interesting about that is, is that as a former atheist myself, I kid you not that Life of Brian is still one of my favorite movies. I've never not liked the movie. Um, and what is most noticeable to me about it, I'm not kidding. I left atheism because I noticed how they were acting like the people in that movie. That was part of what got me leaving atheism. Like, look at how they're behaving. They're behaving like the people in... I noticed atheists behaving like the people in Brian, Life of Brian. And I, I, ever I since like I've that. seen it over and over and over again, they do. Aaron Ross followers, Richard Carrier's followers, Sam Harris followers... They're all like that. They're all just like the people in Life of Brian. They're, it's it's stunning. I'm sorry, Engine. What were you gonna say? Yeah, I like Dogma. Dogma. I, I have you know I, I I liked the movie Dogma at one time. I got issues with it now. We could probably do a stream. Yeah, because yeah, because you're Catholic, obviously. Well, no, actually, I dude, I've always actually that's not fair, and I assume you're just poking me on that because. I'm open-minded to stuff that makes fun of that, but there's some specific inaccuracies in there that didn't used to bother me that now do, um, because they look intentional. Um, and I think Kevin Smith should have known better. But whatever, it, it, it had its moments as a movie. Well, he's, 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 he's not an atheist. He's definitely Well, I know he's not. I know he's not. He's definitely not. Um, and, and, you know, so anyway... <laughs> I also, I just, I just want to say that that's what what's so uh, uh, why I do take offense at, at a lot of things that are uh, uh, supposed to be satire these days because so much of what passes for satire just is not actually satirical. There are no unintended consequences. It is actually pandering to a completely uh, expected uh, atheist following. So it, it, wow. it is the pandering that that really gets under my skin. And, but I get what you're saying, by the way. I mean, for whatever reason, even though atheism is un unstoppable, is on the surface more hostile. When I watch his stuff, I don't sense anywhere near the level of hatred and vitriol and hostility that comes out of some of them. And I, I can only, I can totally see what you mean. But like, I have my favorite atheist. Like, I really like Bionic Dance. Don't ask me why I like her. I like her. I really do. She just seems like I can I can hang with her. I really could. No, I don't. No, I, maybe it's because well, I, I, I like AIU because he's entertaining and he's funny. That's I, yeah, I, well, I want to be his friend, but I find him entertaining and funny. Yeah, I, I kind of find that I feel that way about Bionic Dance. I do find her entertaining and funny, and you know. You know, yeah, she's a little neurotic, but so am I. So, you know, we can relate. I <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Let, let's just let's just walk away from that. Yeah, let's just walk away from that. That's right. I like I, I, I the point is is I think we've all got our favorite atheist problem. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, yeah. they charm us and, you know, this one seems less obnoxious and stupid or somehow or whatever. So, okay, um why don't we go ahead and jump to this week by the way we're doing the Eternal Life Fam now believes in God again. So this is by Atheism is Unstoppable. We have the time points. Where are the time points? I used to think it would be fun if these guys would come in and, and chat with us, but now I just realized, nah, none of them really ever want to do that. Okay, so what, what did Bray mark off first? The first part is 105 to 215. All right, let me know if the sound is okay, guys. Yeah, I'm sitting here. Right, you forgot but... to introduce me, you douche. Oh, oh, well, we don't like you anyway. Uh, some guy named White Engine has crashed the party. <laughs> uh, no, everybody, please say hi to White Engine and go subscribe to his channel. He's also been a friend to us for uh, going on a year now, I think. I'm, I can't quite remember, but always good no, to see you. No, just a few months. Just a few months? Well, okay. Um, uh, I don't know. It's, man, it's already June. We're already well into June. Uh, almost July. All right, anyway. Let's uh, let's see what we got from 105 to 215. Jesus and you're not going to heaven. There is no heaven and there is no God. Mic drop later. Sincerely, a tough, edgy, kick-ass atheist. Oh, you got problems with life? Deal with it. That's just not how people operate. People are scared. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can we people don't know the answers. People. Bit. Can we what? Can we get video because I'm seeing gray here? Oh, I apologize. Do we not have video? Let me turn video back on, or I'll see if I can get the video going. Yeah, and let, let's Here. see what NIU is responding to. Oh, well, he's responding to the Eternal Life fan now believes in God again. 
Uh, that would actually, by the way, if anybody cares, uh, most people apostatize out of atheist and leave the atheist fold. Um, that's just, well, I, I don't see where, where the original video is, but here it is. The Eternal Life fan now believes in God again. Let me bring this up, and we'll just yeah, start about from one. Why does that keep coming up? Have this, uh, you have this douche nugget here. Uh, I think he's going through Columbus Circle with with his, all his favorite gurus on the shirt. It's like, yeah, I've, I've never read an actual book in my life. Here, does this look, does this make me look smart? Right, like I keep, I kept looking at that. Like, why would someone do that? Like, right, let's try. Show. We gotta go to two fifteen now. Let's that. do it. Dang it, <sighs> my interface, my tech is low tech. Uh, send us donations so we will have higher. <laughs> Mic drop later. Sincerely, a tough, edgy, kick-ass atheist. Oh, you got problems with life? Deal with it. That's just not how people operate. People are scared. People don't know the answers. People are looking for answers from somebody older than them. At first, it's your mommy and daddy. Whatever they say is the truth. They tell you something, you listen, you follow. And then you grow up, and then it's teachers, and then it's politicians, and it's church leaders. Humans are a social creature meant to fall in line. And when it's just you versus the universe, and you're not buying in to all of these happy thoughts that we tell ourselves to get us through the night, you're faced with the realization that the night is dark and full of terror. And it's scary, and it sucks. And there's no pill that you can take to make this go away. Although I do know a guy who's got some good stuff, and if you need a pill, hit me up in DMs. Now that brings right. us to one Rowan Horn, a man known in my circle of friends as the Eternal Life Fan. He's a personal friend of mine, and I was shocked and appalled to see him release a video in which he is announcing that he is now once again a God believer. This is a man who famously is focused on the quest for eternal life. Okay, okay, so... You're don't shot. Don't in you a love? Dog. They, don't you love when they pull that armchair philosophy? On I know. It's, it's no. It's always armchair psychology and armchair sociology. Yes. Yeah. Always, without a hint of evidence, they claim to be irrational and evidence based. They will never uh, proffer a, a scrap of evidence for these broad uh, 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 psychological proclamations. What you know? What is the evidence that his that his you know? Why are you offended? I mean, one of the biggest, uh, why would you lie and say we don't have evidence for an afterlife when we have evidence for an afterlife, sir? And why would well, we you lie? We haven't gotten to that part yet. We yeah, I know. Part. Why would you lie and say we have, don't have, okay, well, well, what did he say? I mean, really, I, I want to know where the Atheist Club uh, rules get that, you know, first you guys claim you have no beliefs. And you just right. lack belief. But then you declare that anybody who does believe something you don't is insane or stupid and needs to be mistreated. Have you ever noticed there's something a little cultish about that? Almost like when you, do, when you join atheism, is like joining Jehovah's Witness and you'll be shunned and mistreated if you leave atheism. By the way, I'm not the first person to notice you get mistreated when you're an atheist and you leave atheism. By the way, I'm an ex-atheist. You want to come talk to me about how uh, uh, irrational and stupid and appalling I am? I dare you to talk to me, you big bully. I don't think you can. Well, because you're a bully. Uh, most of you professional atheist hypocrites are bullies. And you're cowards. Anyway, who else? Well, well, AI, AI, AIU himself has said that no one ever leaves the fold of atheism. We so don't. if you if you were to say that, he would uh, he would pull out the uh, no true atheist. No true atheist, because even though he yes. lacks belief, he can define for me what what my what atheist. He can define for everybody else what true atheism is, because yeah. he is atheism is unstoppable. So therefore, he can declare I was never a real atheist based on what evidence, sir? Do you want to see my my Richard Dawkins books, my Penn Jillette box sets, my I'm sorry Penn Penn and Teller box sets, my yeah. my, my Nietzsche quotes, my fucking I mean, what are you... Yeah. Well, he hasn't said that yet. I want to know, will he pull a no true atheist on me? Because, really, I was probably atheist longer than he was alive. How old is this guy, anyway? He comes off like he's about 22, I think, but... No, no, he's he's actually, like, my age, pretty much. Are you... If, if you shit. actually see, uh, uh, he actually has a video of himself. He was actually in uh, O.J. Simpson's courtroom. Oh my God! Really? So, so he he's like in his forties and still talking like such a shallow, retarded. Didn't, didn't he say that? Um, the way he talks. 
I, I think I, he said it, I think he said in one video that in the 20 years of my life or something like that. All right, well, let's no, see. No, exactly. he, I don't know. I know Ray Markoff, 216 to 333. Let's just see. We've got some more of yeah. him attacking a man for having ideas. Let's notice this, by the way. Atheism is unstoppable. Is mad at an, that someone thinks and has an idea he doesn't share. Nothing totalitarian or Nazi-like about that. Now, he was raised religious, and he comes from a religious community. And so for a while, he was all cool with the world because he thought he was going to live forever. You know, because God and heaven. But then part of him realized, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. And his skepticism and sense of rational thought took over. And he became an atheist, but an atheist who was crusading for actual, physical, eternal life. But even during that time, he always had one foot in the religious camp. He would talk to religious people. He would keep an open mind with the possibility of there being a god. He was a uh, self-admitted, just unabashed, Pascal's wager type dude. Where he oh thought, well, if there is a god, I don't want to upset him. And that would be cool because then I get to live forever. So let me just hedge my bets sort of thing. Well, oh, it turns wow. out that Rowan has let the fear get the better of him. With all of his campaigning and all of his huffing of silver and eating of peanut butter, all of his attempts at eternal life, none of them have really given him a true sense of security. He has a sinking feeling that he's not going to live forever. And so his psyche has decided to double down and just override his skepticism and just <laughs> tell himself that there's a god and it's all going to be okay. Let's watch him admit to this in his own words. No, no, no. Okay, okay. okay. Go ahead, Ray. Do you, do you mark this up. You haven't had a chance yet. You want to say anything, Ray? <laughs> like, it's like, all I'm seeing this is I'm seeing him just saluting a Sam Harris picture constantly going, Hail Harris. First of all, <laughs> And it's like, really, dude? <laughs> hey, excuse the crap out of him for actually talking to people instead of just yeah. commenting them like you do. For, for being non-believers, they sure have a lot of idols they worship. Well, yes. and, they, and they have a nice list of people you're allowed to talk to and people you're not allowed to talk to. You're not allowed to talk to people who have the bad thought. I'm going to repeat my observation. Atheism is Unstoppable's brand of atheism appears to basically be Jehovah's Witness of atheism. To shun anybody who has and, any and, questions and, and any thoughts. Huh? And psychoanalyze. And psychoanalyze, psychoanalyze, psychoanalyze. By the way, apparently when you join atheism, you become a psychology expert. Like, you immediately have... PhD level psychology powers above and, and beyond and, and empowered to and, and you, uh, PhD level psychology okay. powers and empowered to make instant diagnoses over the internet. That's what you get. Out and in, and in, uh, and they're also experts in science, history, right? And, yes. uh, and know, sociology, philosophy. Soci the sociology <laughs> goes right right alongside the uh, the psychology. Uh, yeah. I also love that he criticized him for being. I've open. actually taken sociology oh, and psychology. Oh. What's that? I've actually taken sociology and psychology. Okay. Oh, you have, more, you have more expertise than he does. But uh, he actually criticized uh, 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 Eternal Life and for being open to the possibility of God's existence. Isn't that what atheists always brag about? Is their uh, doxastic openness? They're open to considering any possibility. Now here you have AIU criticizing Eternal Life and for always having been open to the possibility of God existing. And I just, uh, he kind of mentioned offhand before, uh, he used his reason and rationality to decide that God doesn't exist. Okay, uh, where's the evidence for this claim that anyone used reason and rationality to decide that God exists? I actually, if you go into the comments of this video, I actually blitzkrieged the uh, comments to this video about a week or two ago. And, uh, of course, I just always say, you know, I show me the evidence, tonight. show me the, uh, uh, the process of reason and rationality, whereby I will end up at the conclusion that God doesn't exist. And of course, naturally, everyone is going, no, you're shifting the burden of proof, you're shifting the burden of proof. So atheists actively refuse hey, to Hey, did they, did they shadow ban you or something? I don't see any comments from you. I see no comments from you. 
I've seen none whatsoever from you well, on they, this. They video. might have gotten pushed down. They might have got, or they might have gotten deleted. Who knows? No, I'm just but wondering because they're known to atheists for all their whining about it are known to shadow ban. I'm I'm shadow banned on a number of channels where I didn't do anything but call them out. Well, on I, their I, I'm hardly a saint in that regard too. But yeah. fair enough. Uh, no, I want to play. Like, we it officially play, looks to wanna... me. I want to put it out in the air. It officially looks to me like atheism is unstoppable, has shadow banned deflating atheism. And I wonder if I'm shadow banned too. I don't know. Someone should just ask atheism is unstoppable to check. It's, it, it's very common in well, atheist I, land I, I to did, do that. I did get responses. At, I did get responses at the time. That's why. That's why <laughs> okay, that's why but I, I mean, nobody, still, you never nobody, know. Nobody wanted to outline this process of, 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 of uh, uh, reasoning whereby you arrive at the conclusion that God does not exist. And yet, uh, it's just kind of uh, uh, axiomatic here for AIU. It's the guy who became an atheist because of satire. Yeah, yeah. Because of satire and can't see the fact that the atheist community looks exactly like the followers of Brian. Because they do. But, they do. By the way, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say this. Uh, I have watched the full video, and uh, something strikes me as very strange about this eternal life ban. And so I, I can't take everything he says at face value, but uh, uh, I'm not even concerned about that. I just want to address what AIU says. Oh, that's but fair. Yeah. And by the way, this I mean, that's why even on this show, I'll put it out again for any of uh, Atheism is Unstoppable's fans. On this show, we bring on deists, we bring on Catholics, we bring on Orthodox, we bring on... Uh, fundamentalists who are not Catholic hostile, we bring on you know, Hindus, we bring on Muslims, we bring on Jews. We're very open to and people different. And, and according to our mutual mutual friend, uh, all atheists know there's a God, but they hate him. I, 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 well, I'll tell you what. Um, I think there are atheists who are genuinely confused because I was one of them. But quite a few of them really do hate God, and they show that all the time. I think atheism is unstoppable is one of those. Um, and um, uh, once once he's confronted with the fact that he's basically a, and that atheism is unstoppable is basically intellectual tyrant and a bully, which is what he is, and that he's really not funny. Um, maybe things will change for him. Anyway, well, let's, I, I, well we I, don't I, have I, to I, endorse what this guy. I, 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 my point about all those other religions. My point about all those funny, but in a different way. My point about all those other religions is, is I don't. We don't have to agree with everything that uh, this eternal life guy is saying to see that what a, what what yeah. what atheism is unstoppable is doing is simply psychological bullying, uh, with no substance to it other than being a schoolyard bully. He's in. He, that's that's all you are. Atheism is unstoppable. And by the way, your fans are kind of sad too that they think this bullying behavior by you is entertainment. Okay, so anyway, let's go ahead. But I, I love the I love the imperious tones when when they get to proclaim that you only believe because you are afraid of the existential horror. But uh, it's yeah. natural to cling to these comforting illusions. Oh, and, thank and it's, you. It's such a power trip. It's such a. I, I, power I love trip. when they do that. It's such a power trip for completely <laughs> inconsequential pissants, you know. Yeah, it really is. All right, let's do the three thirty-five. Because if if because it, here's the paradox: if there is no God and no afterlife, then they'll never know they're right, and believers will never know they're wrong. It's like predicting the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah, but the fact is, we've got lots of evidence of an afterlife. All right, let's go for the three thirty-five to four twenty-two. All right, you guys, eternal life fans, everyone. I got some news. I believe in God. I, uh, somewhere along the line, I started believing in God, and, uh, I don't exactly know how this happened, but it did. I, I didn't think this kind of thing could happen. Um, he feels conflicted. Can you sense that? He's not really happy about this. It's not... He doesn't have that fake plastic smile of a typical Christian who strut around thinking typical. that they know some secret that we don't know. Like, hey, God loves me, this I know. God loves me, and I'm going to live in the clouds soon. Typical Christian? No, you know, screw you, you bigoted wow. duck. C-U-N-T. I mean, really, I'm trying to, I, I'm, I'm pulling down back my language, but really. Really? really? Heaven's in the clouds? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. I, 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 who, who do you think, uh, why are they, well, because they got nothing going for them if they're not hateful and nasty like that, I guess. 
I mean, we have ample and abundance. To, uh, and I mean, I'm sorry, this guy is not very coherent. It really says something about how bad uh, education is. But here, let me point something out to you. Atheism is unstoppable. Copious and abundant science shows that it is normal. This is something that you both should know. Copious and abundant science shows that it is normal for children to develop a sense that there is a guiding intelligence operating the universe. They develop it around the same time they as they develop language, between the ages of two and four. And they can easily distinguish it between from Santa Claus and invisible friends. They can do it on their own with little or no prompting from their friends. When we look as adults for evidence that there may be some truth to this inborn normal sense that we were evolved for, we can actually find evidence all over the place that there may in fact be a guiding intelligent operating in the universe. We have lots of evidence for that and we have for thousands of years. And by the way, you're a lying bully if you say we have no evidence that a guiding intelligence uh, uh, is driving the universe. Yes, we do. We have, in other words, we have an evolved natural uh, intuitive sense of this and then when we go looking for evidence elsewhere, we can do indeed find evidence elsewhere. Therefore, sir, you're a, either either one of you looks foolish saying that you can't rationally state why you believe there's a God. What this what the, what I believe is happening with this you know um, uh, eternal life fan is simple. His natural intuitive sense that there has to be a God has finally kicked in, but he hasn't bothered all this time to go and look for what the rational evidence that there is a God is. But there's lots of it. Go see Ed Fazer's book, Five Proofs of God, for an updating of the classical proofs, and go look at Inspiring Philosophy's channel or this channel. We've got evidence all over contemporary science that there's a God in an afterlife. Any claim that we have no evidence is a lie on its face. Any claim that we have have no evidence is intellectual tyranny and bullying on its face. You may wish to say that you don't find the evidence but uh, uh, convincing, but I'll tell you what, I have seen what members of the skeptic community have tried to do in so-called debunking some of the evidence, and I find many of your debunkers unconvincing. And I think you, sir, are a horrible bully. And I think you, Mr. Uh, um, uh, Eternal Life fan, just do a little studying. Come on over here, bud, without even trying to make you be Catholic. I will give you 50 references that will prove that your atheism is unstoppable, buddy, is full of crap. Because atheism is unstoppable, you're on, you're full of crap. And you're a hateful bully. Okay, so, yeah, that, that anybody else into, have anything? What? Yeah, that kind of ties into what I was going to say before. I mean, AIU made the uh, decision to be an atheist edgy teenager or an edgy 12-year-old or whatever. And since then, uh, he has completely cocooned himself in these in these intellectual mediocrities of Richard Dawkins and uh, Penn he, he also He also moved out of the country because of Trump. Well, no, I think he was out of the country oh, yeah. before then. <laughs> but yeah, but he cocooned himself. So now he's in, in, in a very little uh, comfortable, oh. ignorant bubble. And, and so he's been... He, He's, he's basically bracketed out any reason to doubt his faith that God doesn't exist. And, and so uh, I think with, with uh, Eternal Life Fan here, yeah, uh, he is similarly uneducated. He, he was kind of raised in so, sort of the same morass as, a, as a AIU. But now, as you say, he does have those, you know, that feeling, that, that kind of natural apprehension that that there is, a, a, you know, something obviously uh, running the universe, that there is a divine, that there is a spiritual father, that there is a first cause, but it may still be uh, inchoate. It's still kind of in its germinal stages, and so he might be unsure. But as I said, uh, the way he speaks, the way Eternal Life uh, fan speaks in this video, is very strange, and I, I do have uh, difficulty taking everything he says at face value. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, I just I just want to make sure of something. Yeah. So to the audience, notice how notice how we talk to this person because he says Eternal Life fan is his friend. What kind of jacked up friend is he? <laughs> yeah, a really he also, a he really he abusive also, he also, friend. Uh, he also uh, said in one video that where he criticizes atheists for not being anti theist. He said, "You're not an anti theist. I hate you." Mm -hmm. Mm hmm That's a common position. That's a common position. And, and they also have a lot of animus towards agnostics. Yeah, well, and that this is, again, because the typical... Well, well acor according to them, agnostics are atheists without balls. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> and, and, and... That's why I don't have any friends. <laughs> This is why, as an ex-atheist, I say without hesitation, fans of Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris, B. 
Daniel Dennett and Richard Dawkins are horrible, awful, nasty people who you should rightly dislike. They should not be welcome in polite company. People like this should lose job opportunities. They should lose friends. Uh, definitely Eternal Life fans should just hang up on this guy. Remove him from your phone. Remove him from your contacts. Block him and tell him why. Because you're a hateful, hideous, nasty bully. Uh, you are the totalitarian thought police. You're vicious, well, you're cruel, Disney. you're hateful. Um, you're Christ a bully. to love your enemy. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Um, you can one, oh, Quite often, the best, most loving thing to do is let people know in no uncertain terms, with, with firm boundaries, look, I am not here to take your abuse. And this is abuse that he's dishing out to his friend. Have no doubt. Um, he should not enable the bullying. He should turn his back on his friends. Um, by the way, there's all kinds of stuff in the scripture that says you are not required to do that. Um, you know, um, I, and I can give quite a plenty of quotes, but you know, shake the, you know, you know, the dust off your sandals, you salt and good cheer. There's a, a you know, um, um, uh, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he think himself wise. You do not have to take abuse, and there's lots of examples of biblical figures showing that you do not have to take abuse. You don't have to take abuse from a family member. You don't have to take abuse from a so-called friend. And what All right, I think we should move on. And what atheism is unstoppable in doing here is abusive to his friend and is not being a real friend. I'm saying it straight up. He's abusive. Okay, um, let's see. We got 5.20 to 6.30. All right, here we go. I feel like it happened from <sighs> black people are apes. So when I was an atheist, I had this philosophy that said... Um, well, People should idea. fear the hypothetical God. I said, you know, because we're agnostics, we don't know if there's a God or not. You know, I was an agnostic atheist. So, what are you saying here? See that, and that tells you everything. The guy was an agnostic. We don't know. <laughs> that He took shelter in that lack of ultimate knowledge. And if you explain to him that if you want to get all technical and say I'm agnostic about God, then we're agnostic about every single thing. I'm agnostic about whether or not I'm lying in a bed right now. Well, can you put that to a degree of certainty? Well, it's 99.999. The reason I leave a little space is because, yeah, I'm not omniscient. So, yes, I could be a brain in a vat who just thinks he's lying in a bed right now. Now, to a normal human being, that would not be an impressive admission. The degree of certainty I have that there is no God is the same degree of certainty that I am not humping an albino llama right now. Exact same degree. But Rowan took solace in that uncertainty. And he said, ah, so you're saying there's a chance. Okay. Oh, my. Okay, that was pretty retarded. Go ahead, somebody. Ray? Well, uh, uh, yeah, he goes through this video, and uh, uh, even if we don't get all the way through it, he basically uh, kvetches for like 20 minutes about what such a basic, uh, foundational, obvious assumption God's non-existence is. And he does this for 20 minutes, and if you comb through the comments, it's all like people say, you know, it's like, how can you suddenly believe that 2 plus 2 no longer equals 4? It's just all God's non-existence is so plainly obvious to everyone, and it will spend 20 minutes, they will write all these diatribes. Uh, they will not think, if it's so basic... It should take 30 seconds to explain why God doesn't exist. It should take two sentences to explain why God doesn't exist. But they will actively refuse to do so. And that, that, that just speaks volumes. What I really want they're, to pretty, do... they're pretty overconfident in their atheism until backed into a corner. Then it's just like a belief. Well, you don't have to, to back even... into a corner. Just ask them, why, why is this such a basic assumption? Why should I believe that God doesn't exist? And, and he, refuse... here's... here's I got a good strategy for when... Ever talking to um, an atheist and trying to reason with them, like uh, if you found out there was a God, would you want to have a relationship with it? And if Jesus was who Almost said he was, say no. would you be a would you be a Christian? And if yeah, they say no, then further discussion is pointless. That's the uh, that's the Frank Turek strategy, right? Now, there's some real truth to that, but yeah. I, I, I'm much more basic. I'm just. Are you? Will you admit that it is that, that a rational person could disagree with you? And if they will not, they are not worth talking to. Yeah. So, for example, atheism is unstoppable here. Even though I have rationally concluded, based on copious evidence, that there has to be a God, there has to be a soul, there has to be an afterlife, I am convinced by copious and overwhelming evidence, and as a former atheist, I find the atheist position retarded. But, what, 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 but, but I still feel that it is an atheist's own business if he wants to be in denial of the copious and massive evidence that there has to at least be a God, because there does. Um, 
It's this notion that you get to abuse people who disagree with you. Why? Wh where did you get that license to be such a hateful, horrible, nasty person who thinks that you get to abuse people who simply don't agree with you and hold an idea that you don't like? Really, why are you not the thought police? I think you're hateful and nasty. As a Christian, I like my Hindu and Mormon and, and Buddhist and, and Deist friends a lot more than I like you or any of your friends. You seem hideous and hateful to me. I also like Muslims better than you. You also are bigger bullies to me than any Muslim has ever been, which is why I often say I like Muslims better than I like guys like you, because whatever is jacked up about Islam, they've never been as hostile, nasty, and hateful to me as you and your hateful, anti-theist thug friends. And I used to be an atheist. So, come talk to me about it, if you dare. I say you're a horrible thug, sir, and you're not funny. I dare you to come talk to me. Next, anybody else got anything? Yeah. I, I think, um, well, go ahead. Well, well what I was, I was going about to say. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, right, was, was that like, too mic droppy? Good. I could just go, and we could go to another style. We can go to another se second if you want. Um, yeah. Well, I, I just say uh, if the atheists they love uh, claiming that 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 you know uh, the minds of religious people are closed and they are open to the evidence that they're open to any idea. All you need to do is like show them the evidence. Well, ask an atheist at that point. Say, so are you open to the possibility that that uh, uh, that there is good evidence for God that either uh, uh, you are not aware of or that you do not understand uh, perfectly. And are you uh, open to the possibility uh, that there are people who believe in God who may have rational reasons for doing so that maybe you're just not smart enough to understand yet? And if they, if they say, no, uh, I'm not open to that possibility, that's not possible, well, then you've just, you've just uh, exploded uh, their entire pretense of being, of being open to any possibility. Yeah, I hope atheism is unstoppable does not claim to be an open-minded person because it's very clear that he is the absolute epitome of the closed-minded dogmatist. Not to mention, again, I will repeat, a really hateful intellectual bully who's not funny. Well, I, I think he called... Huh? I think he called, like... I think he called Mike Pence closed-minded. I, I, I mean, really, I think really. I, when I was when I was an atheist, I would have been ashamed of this guy. I would apologize to my religious friends for horrible human beings like this, and they would say, "Well, I know all atheists are not like that," but that I had to cringe and do that. Um, yeah, uh, atheism is unstoppable. I'm not even saying atheism is unstoppable. I'm saying if you're a fan of atheism and it's unstoppable, you're really horrible. And I just want you to know that you're horrible as a human being if you think this guy's funny or insightful or even brave, because he's not. He's a, he's a coward, and he's nasty as hell. But I understand this, some this people like escape, him, so, huh? This guy in a skateboard is probably listening to it like a Sam Harris podcast on his earbuds. Oh, I gotta say, just, Sam he Harris... marinates himself in mediocrity, you know? <clears throat> Let's look at... Her, her, yeah. uh, Harris rarely thought his podcast would be a monumental success, but it turns out Peterson is having more and more and more followers than he could ever hope to have. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. This is uh, apparently for <laughs> wisdom, because the article was, was taken down. But yeah, uh, uh, Sam Harris actually bought a $12 million teardown in Pacific Palisades. That is, he bought a $12 million house to tear it down and build a more expensive house there. So, uh, whatever he's giving his followers, uh, obviously, uh, they're thirsting for it in the same way that, that AIU claims that, you know, Christians desperately need to believe in God. So, I, I think what he's giving them is, is this pretense that they are the intellectual elite, that they are anti the intellectual Anti-theists desperately need to feel self-important. Yes. Too. Yes. I, I, I mean, even so even 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 though even though given atheism, we're all just specks of dust in yeah, an yeah. universe it's, it's, filled with random tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, by the way, I, I I will also say in case anybody's listening, I routinely find Sam Harris fans, not just Sam Harris, but Sam Harris fans, horrible people to even be in the same room with. They're such awful, nasty people. And I just want you people to hear that. Horrible, nasty people would not do business with, would not shake the hands of, just horrible, nasty people. But I, I, I do... But anyway. I'm sorry, but... 
I, I was going to say, I do get the sense watching AIU's videos and reading uh, the comments of, of his fanboys, uh, uh, there, they, there is a sense that, that atheism is collapsing. And I think, I think videos like this are, are kind of a panicked reaction to it. And, and it couldn't have anything to do with the fact that you guys are so horribly smug, nasty, and awful, and closed-minded, and hideous, and bullying, and nasty! All right. Anyway, let's let's give let's do another minute of this. Nine forty-eight to uh, nine fifty-seven. Don't you fear death if you believe in God? Surely the afterlife is part of this whole bullshit belief system, right? N n nice question. My bullshit. That is my main thing. I still fear death. I'm so oh. tremendously afraid of death. But now I can say that I do believe in God for some weird reason. Yeah, that's a good weird reason. Reason. It's not even a reason. You haven't There's explained the reason reasons. why. Aside from you want it to be real, no. which is just sad. It's like a fat kid saying, I Not want enough. ice cream to make me thinner. It, no. Okay. Is it insane here? Insane. If there's a god, maybe he just snippets? zapped me and made me have belief now, and I believe. Like, I don't know how that happened, but it happened. I have it. You're wrong about this. Every fucking word. <laughs> what a cop-out. Holy shit. So instead of giving us Did an I actual reason, anything coherent, he just adds to the fiction of it all and pretends that God made him a believer. Right. Oh, isn't that convenient? Hey, Rowan, defend your position as to why you believe in this thing called God. Well, God made me believe in him. Oh, well, isn't that just a tidy circle? I fear... I defend your belief that God doesn't exist. Let's just stop here for now. <laughs> Dude, okay, first off, uh, I will state again, actually, I will state, the very fact that most people think there is a God as an intuitive sense, that they have that as a natural intuitive sense... Actually, if you're honest, all by itself is proof that there is something like a god. If you were honest and you understood evolution and basic logic, just the fact that most people have an intuitive, logical sense of it, all by itself is evidence. Now, if you're not a complete moron, you will also go ahead and go out and look if there is other evidence. And you know what? It turns out there is other evidence. And anybody who told you that there is not other evidence lied to you. Atheism is unstoppable. Now, why is it that I think you will be afraid to come and talk to me about this evidence? Probably because it might hurt your career, because you might have to become an agnostic, because actually anybody who's really honest and starts looking at the evidence should become at least an agnostic because there's lots of evidence. And by the way, anybody who says there's not evidence lies, 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 lies. This means you, by the way. Also, Steve Shives, if he says there's no evidence, he lies. You lie. Well, you say there's no evidence, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Go ahead. What? Well, that, now that now that his channel has gotten deleted for the third time, and he's start he's starting over again. I think I think that this should be his new lease on life. So he's he's no longer bound to be a professional atheist anymore. <laughs> well, because there's other things he could do. And by the way, he does have talent. And no, no, he got, got taken down because he's been exposed as a darkster and a bully. Well, that's because that's when you go into atheism, you become a bully. Most atheists are bullies. Have you not noticed? Hey, listen, atheism is unstoppable. Really, anti-atheist. If you, if you, well, professional atheists, let's put it to you that way. Professional atheists, they all turn into horrible bullies. All of them, have you noticed? Professional atheists are always bullies. Um, and, um, I mean, pretty much without exception. And so, if you want to stop being a bully, by the way, atheism is unstoppable. I'm pre prepared to forgive everything. All you have to do is admit you've been a cock um, and that you've been wrong about something because you have, because we have lots of evidence, mate. Um, you otherwise do have, uh, you know, talent, so you might be able to put it to something positive. Even if you don't come to Jesus, you don't have to do that. You can stop being such a cock and probably make more money and more friends not being a cock than being a cock. Just saying. All right, should we keep yes, on? Or Max, Max, or not? Max and I are two Christians who do not wear the, the fake plastic smiles. Thank yeah. you very much. No, we don't. And we're not the only ones. We're not the only ones. We're not the only ones. Sorry, did anybody else have anything? We're, uh, no. Obviously, AIU does not go that way, yes. Well, I'll just keep, no well, let's keep noticing this. Like, he's always talk like he's talking about how sad that is I believe in God now. Like, who's the one who was just conversing with audio files and thinking that that's a valid argument? Because it's not Eternal Life Fan. And who's the one who just put up a picture of an SJW and he's supposed to be, quote-unquote, a skeptic? <laughs> Steve Shives, like, if anybody's sad here, it's Mr. Kangaroo. <laughs> These guys are so selective in their skepticism, they're hilarious. 
All right, anybody got anything else? All right, let's do uh, 1059 to 1159. To end the sentence there, you fear. Yes, that defines you. You are defined by fear. Do you think this is a commendable trait? I fear, therefore I am. That's your slogan. That appears you to be fear, yours. You fear, therefore you're, you're now bullshitting yourself and insulting everybody by declaring that you're a believer in God. What a retarded thing. I mean, just palpably retarded. This is a stupid little trick that you have to stop using because it makes you look terrible, all right? It's going to get you fucking nowhere, so just listen to me. (laughs) You could still, I mean, you could call it still a hypothetical God because I don't know the exact parameters, so still everything is hypothetical. No, 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 but don't change the subject. I just happen to believe in the God part now, but it's still hypothetical as far as... The rules and everything, because who knows the rules? Like, wait, 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 wait,
nothing infuriates me more than fake scientists like Richard Dawkins and Jerry Coyne. All right, let's see what we got here. From me. Oh, by the way, uh, this, this, in, what? In case this is confusing for the audience, uh, AIU is cross-cutting uh, 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 little uh, sound bites from his from his guru Sam Harris in, into this video. So it's additionally confusing uh, on top of what we're doing. Yeah, but uh, yeah, atheism is unstoppable. An obvious, you know, follower of the deranged atheist hate cultist Sam Harris. Yes. Okay. So anyway. Who can say? Oh, great. See, now we're walking into that territory of we must know the word of God. Oh, interesting. I believe, I get that. I mean, I have that psychological itch. I have all this fear. The God thing sort of, it's like aloe vera for my extreme fear of death. But I still don't oh. understand God's will. Maybe I'll come across someone who claims to know God's will. Maybe, oh, here's one. What if I start hearing God? Oh, what if I start hearing the word of God that he's talking to me? Interesting. You realize we're an inch away from that happening, right? But I am, I don't know the rules, but I can still guess the rules, just like I was doing before. So I can guess the rules, what the, what the rules might be. <laughs> I can guess the rules of the universe. Oh, my Lord. This is like a guessing game. It's like playing charades. Wait, okay, wait, God, God's doing something to me. He's, okay, four words, yes. First, first word, again, three syllables, okay. Sounds like. All of that was delusional. It seems Please prove that, Sam, you hateful pseudoscientist. You can't prove that at all. At all, at all, at all, you lying coward. Sorry, who else has something to say? <laughs> well... For one thing, he keeps talking about, well, God's will, like, he does realize people who believe in God don't think we're going to get a sign like the burning bush talking to us, like in Moses, right? Like That happens once in a while, but we're not usually expecting that. No. Yeah. Right. And, and it's like, yeah, dude, we got to figure it out, but it's well, not like in the Aslan way he's describing it. Well, he talks about it so dismissively. It's like, well, maybe God will start speaking to you. I was like, well, so what if he does? It's more than you're giving us. Yeah, uh, a man who will pontificate for, for 20 minutes about, about how, how obvious it is that God doesn't exist, but will refuse to, to show why it's so obvious. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, anybody got anything else, or we want to push through and finish this Go thing? Go on. All right, we just did 13.05 to 12.08. Let's see if we can bring up 14.42. We're almost done. 14.42. If I can hit that. Close enough to 15.23, and we are almost done. A lot of this I still haven't sorted out yet because I just figured out that I really do believe in God. So a lot of the details I haven't sorted out yet. I have to f flip everything around. I have to reassign my brain. It's re re-network the brain pathways because... So you're going to brainwash yourself and reprogram no. your brain to think like a religious person. Shut up. Like a lemming. No. It doesn't really make sense to go from talking about this amorphous, vague, infantile no, notion that there's this thing called God, to then talking about your brain. Clearly your brain is not that impressive if this is what it's come up with. It's trivially easy. You know, that's a lot for the brain. I mean, I imagine all my brain connections that were wired in a particular way. As an atheist, right? My brain connects. We're like, oh, right? I, I, I think you're I think we missed it. We were supposed to stop. Okay, so all right, so all right, brainwashing. First off, uh, I want to mention, by the way, please give us uh, uh, the peer-reviewed studies. Uh, please present the peer-reviewed studies for your extraordinary claim that becoming religious is brainwashing. Please define brainwashing, and please give me the studies that prove that becoming religious, which is normal in humans, is somehow definable as such. Please explain also why you are qualified to render this diagnosis for your minority and shrinking atheist position. <laughs> but again, please provide the peer-reviewed studies for your extraordinary claim that there is any such thing as brainwashing going on here, yes. simply because this man has drawn an inchoate, 
intuitive conclusion and is exploring his options. By the way, this is a normal conclusion to reach because, by the way, there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of evidence that there is a God. And there's lots of reasons to think that your ludicrous idea of a godless universe is actually impossible and stupid and fantastical and intensely ideological. By the way, you talk like you want to hurt people because they believe an idea that you don't share. Nothing cultish or violent or intolerant about that, Mr. Thought Police. Anyway, anybody else have anything or should we go to the last portion? <laughs> go ahead, what? I say. I, 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 again, where is the proof for this brainwashing? And, and, and where is your evidence that people who go... Religious are brainwashed. All right, so we're going to go. And of course, he, he called he called belief in God infantile because it's it's just a, a security blanket. We well, we do to, in fact know the that, psychologist. We do in fact know that infants develop a natural sense of it. The problem is he's got to, uh, you know, back his ludicrous claim that that sense that we evolved is completely delusional and has no other evidence to go with it. I want to hear him back that claim up. Don't think he'll be able to because. He's an atheist. He doesn't have to back any of his claims up. He's just the default rational human. All right, let's see. 2128 to 2154, and this will be it. I have all these rules, and it's all hypothetical. You know, what are the rules of God? But the point is, I don't get a free pass into heaven now that I believe in God. It's like, no, no you still have to work for it. Uh, you don't really have to work for it. Not really at all. In fact, serial killers can get into heaven, according to Christians. He who uh, believes in the Lord Jesus Christ can enter the heaven. Like, it's something very basic. You but before, scoop, stupid liar, atheism is unstoppable. You just mentioned, you just uh, gave, gave the most shallow interpretation of imaginable about what most Christians believe. Please stop reading the Bible like an atheist moron and ask somebody who knows what he's talking about. It's not that simple. But yes, a serial can, a killer can get into heaven. So can a retarded guru, bu go goober bully like you. But most of us don't believe it's about just believing. Okay? Right. So, sorry, who else had to say? Ray, what did you want to say? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Like, like, he's, like, making up this stuff to be literal. Like, dude, you can't even, you don't even know context. Because, again, like I mentioned before, you, you, got, you got your belief from a movie. Yeah. And, again, that's just pretty, pretty sad. But, and, again, like, he, he has no evidence for this stuff, and he... And again, all he just does is go on and on with the ad hominem, ad hominem attacks. It's like, yeah. dude, you're not convincing anybody of anything. Yeah. I, I, and yeah, he, he just goes on and on, and it's so repetitive, he will explain how obvious it is that God doesn't exist 20 times, but he will not explain why, how we can know God does not exist for the first time. And that, that characterizes pretty much all he do, in my experience. Okay, let's have our concluding thoughts then. Engine, did you have any concluding thoughts? No? I'm going to take that as a no. Uh, I, I, I just had a brain fart. Oh, well, <laughs> you're allowed to have that. Young bud, did you have any final thoughts? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, but the serial killers getting into heaven and all that. Like, uh, you repent and you regret. You fit. You, um. You regret everything you've done in your life, and you are truly sorry, and you still have to live with the, suffer with the guilt of what you've done, and realize the full extent of what you caused, and experience what your victims experience. Then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, I, I, there, there, there is there is such thing as redemption, even though that's probably unthinkable in a materialistic universe. Consider it this way: let's let's say you're a serial killer, and you're still on the lam. Now, let's say you've killed 20 people. Uh, saying salvation is not possible at that moment, and you're already damned, you would have no incentive to change your behavior at all. You say, well, well, if I'm already damned, I might, I might as well just make as big a splash as possible when I'm in this life. Uh, uh, that possibility of salvation actually gives you an opportunity to change your behavior. Because when you're locked into the into the atheist worldview, basically the only virtue becomes consistency. 
it, it, it is that is that transcendent reaching into our lives that actually gives us some reason to re-examine our values and say, hey, maybe I'm doing this wrong. Maybe I should be doing it better. Okay, anybody else? Honestly, all I can say is, dude, you suck at arguing, and you are a terrible friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're a terrible friend. You're a terrible, terrible friend, and he should stop being your friend until you apologize for being such a cock and maybe find something better to do with your life that doesn't involve being an intellectual bully. And by the way, to, to this to this dimwit on the skateboard, uh, we all think you're a fool. We all we all we all think you're adult. Uh, read some actual philosophy. Read some Aquinas. You know, read some. Go ahead, but like read Heidegger or anything, or yep. read Dostoevsky. Just anything. Don't lock yourself in, into the uh, uh, recommended reading list of these completely philosophically, culturally, and historically illiterate new atheists. Uh, that's why I see, when I look at you, I see a dupe, I see an illiterate, I see a person who, who, whose entire uh, cultural knowledge comes from that little 2006 New Atheist <laughs> bubble. Uh, you, are, you are a disgracefully uh, culturally illiterate person and philosophically illiterate. Uh, uh, you're, you're basically broadcasting by skateboarding around New York or wherever you are. By skateboarding around New York wearing that shirt, you were basically broadcasting the fact that you are a philosophically, culturally illiterate dimwit. And, and that you are, uh, you are foolish in our eyes. And that's all I have to say to the skateboard dude. I will say that, <laughs> all right, I'm going to make my final statement now then. And I will say that uh, also different uh, Christians have different ideas of salvation, but quite a, a majority of Christians would believe that regardless of at which point you, 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 you repented and became genuinely sorrowful for your sins, you will still be paying one way or the other for them on the other side, uh, whether it's through what the Catholics call purgatory, with whether it's what others call other things. And most Christian denominations also have an idea that some will be, you know, given greater glory in heaven than others. Um, and, 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 and the same is true for hell, by the way, because the, the actual Christian religion is a complicated thing, not the simple thing you make it out to be. No, it's something that our parents brainwash us with, and it's just all a man in the clouds. Yeah, right, which, <laughs> which, which are not evidence propositions, merely faith assertions they make. I, in the end, I'm going to repeat something I've said several times, and I'm not going to back down. No, I don't particularly care if I've hurt your feelings. Atheism is unstoppable. I don't care if I've hurt your fans' feelings. I mean, I really do think you're a hateful, loathsome bully. Uh, I think you're a terrible, terrible friend, and your so-called friend should t turn their back, his back on you. What, what a horrible person you are. Um, by the way, you lie if you say there's no evidence for God because there is. You lie if you say there's no evidence for a soul because there is. You lie if you say there's no evidence for an afterlife because there is. And you lie if you say religion is brainwashing. You have no proof for that whatsoever. That's just a pseudo-scientific bullying bigoted assertion you fling at people you don't even know and even at so-called friends you're a shameful disgraceful human being sir and your fans are awful people too let me repeat so is anybody who gives you money because you're awful I will also repeat, though, that after having said all that, and I will not apologize, I do think you have talent. So if you'd ever like to think about getting out of this creepy atheist gig and actually stop being such a cock to your friends, uh, I have ideas for you and anybody else in your community who has the balls to apostatize out like I did and get out of this creepy atheist cult because it's dumb. And they'll yeah. try to hurt you if you try to get out. Please notice that. And if I'm wrong, try uh, Glow J, uh, Glow J says he or she or whatever. I love you, Max Dean Esme. Well, I love you too, Glow J. Whoever you are, I, I, is that I, is that is that uh, John Gleason's girlfriend, Caitlin? No, I don't. No, it is not. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if you if you see AIU here, subscribe. He has seven point five thousand subscribers. It's more than I have, but it's a small fraction of the ninety thousand. Yeah, now is a great time. Now is a great time to get out of the cratering, collapsing atheism market. AIU resurrection. You can re res. You can resurrect yourself in in a much better guise. 
Uh, think God, of this so many... as an opportunity. Yeah. I wish Godless Cranium would do that too, because there's he's got talent too. Some of these people, man, if they would just get well, out. He, well, un, well, unlike this guy, he has redeeming qualities. Uh, see, I actually see. I've been really hard on atheism is unstoppable here, but I actually think deep down uh, others are right. He's not really as awful. He's not as sociopathically awful. I actually suspect it has hurt his feelings because he's feeling like maybe I have been a horrible bully and that that actually might actually hurt him because I suspect unlike some of his co-religionists and it is a religion, he actually has a conscience and it's bugging him. That's what I suspect, but I could be wrong. All right, everybody, listen. Tomorrow night, uh, Ghost of Buckley and I, along with anybody else who wants in, will be taking on, doing a response video to Thinking Ape. Um, on Tuesday, Engine will be back, where we will be taking on that, 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 that big old bully, uh, Tyler uh, uh, Preston, and with supposedly questions skeptics can't answer. Um. For, for the record, I don't. I have the least experience with Tyler Preston. Is he really that bad? Well, he he was really hideously nasty to me on purpose, and 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 went out of his way. Yeah, yeah, he was involved in efforts to to seriously hurt me online, and so I have a person. Oh yeah, oh yeah. One guy, Ice Man, asks, "Will Cosmic Skeptic ever be on with you?" Uh he's been on. We we've been on at least once. It was kind of cool in distance because uh, I remember who Cosmic Skeptic is. Uh, you know that British kid who they're, who, uh, who they're trying who they're worshiping as the new Hitchens. Oh, I would yeah, love to take on Cosmic. Kid. Okay, I doubt he would have the balls to speak to me. Most of them won't. Uh, no, no, he's he's one of the good ones. Is he? Well, I'd love to speak to him. Then I don't know. A lot of them run, but I, I'll put it out here now. And if anybody wants to get me a contact, let me know. So anyway, we got to finish this out. So I listen, to everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, atheism is unstoppable. You really have been horrible, but I do think if you want to get out of that gig of atheism, I'll be happy to help you. Um, just, you know, stop being such a horrible man and, uh, you know, apologize to some, to some people. You might have some uh, hope for the future. Everybody else, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. We're here every night, and uh, God bless everybody.